but I thought highly of our run defense that just, you know, it's a good run defense, but it didn't come to play today, sadly. So that is what it is. He had a great game, and I'll give him credit. And also to Atari Bigby, he also brought him up. Uh, I'm down to 2K7. Bigby, he played a hell of a game. You know, he was all over the field. He looked like Bob Sanders out there making big hits. And, you know, he's still got some growing to go because he still commits the occasional dumb penalty. He's still a little weak in coverage, but he's a player. He's going to become a... He has potential to become a really, really good player. Um, you know, um, no doubting that. So... That's all I gotta say. Good job. Uh, and um, I, I'm wondering if you're comprehending on the same level that I am concerning Brett Favre might actually get to another Super Bowl. I mean, I felt like it was about a decade ago that it was uh, that his era had passed. I mean, it was 12 years ago that he won a Super Bowl, and 11 years ago that he got to one. Is it just me or is it really, really hard to comprehend that a guy could go 12 years in between Super Bowl wins and possibly 11 years between Super Bowl appearances if they win? I'm not guaranteeing a victory for Green Bay. I, I can't do that. I think they'll win. But I'm just pointing out, how long can an era stretch? I mean, even Joe Montana at the end of his career, he went to Kansas City, lost a couple playoff games, and just disappeared. Look at Favre. He's still going. And it's pretty incredible, I gotta say. And finally, for you Seahawks fans out there, if you watched all the way through this, I don't know if you did, maybe you just heard what I had to say about Seattle and moved on, but as for this offseason, I'll just give my quick thoughts on it. This was a good team this year, really good team at times. It, it even looked great sometimes. So I don't think we're too far off from getting back to the Super Bowl level. I mean, we were better than last year, our defense was one of the best in the league, and our passing game really was able to play really well in spite of uh, injuries to receivers. Now, Dion Branch might miss the next season, actually, because of a severe ACL tear, which sucks. You know, so far that's an investment that hasn't quite paid back yet, but hopefully he can be back in time for the season next year. We'll see. But either way, I think we need to re-sign DJ Hackett. He's our number one guy. Uh, I'm st I still got a bit of a man crush on him because I think he's a special player that's going to be really good in this league for many years. Um, and I think that with or without Branch, we're good to go there. You know, like I said, this was a pretty good team. Um, we lost a couple of tough games, you know, like the Arizona loss and the Cleveland loss. Um, you know, we weren't that far behind Green Bay and Dallas. You know, it didn't look like it on Saturday, but... I'm just saying we need a couple more pieces. We don't need to think about completely revamping the team. So here's what I'd do. I would re-sign our free agents. I would just try and keep the team together first and foremost. Trufant, Hackett, Locklear, those three guys. I think we need to do everything we can to re-sign those guys. Because um, Hackett, I think he's going to be a great threat. Trufant, he could still get better. And he had a fantastic year this year, and there's room to grow. And Locklear, I think he's an underrated right tackle, and he can play guard. So I think we need to keep those three guys around. And um, then I think to afford something like that, maybe we need to dole out some pay cuts. Um, you know, maybe we could work something out with Alexander. I still think Alexander can play. Maybe I'm one of the few, but I think he can still play. Maybe not at an MVP level, but if he can stay healthy and he's given some better interior line play, I think he could be a thousand yard guy next year. You know, a thousand yards doesn't sound great, but I'm just talking about in terms of being in a tandem with Momo and um, Weaver. Um, so yeah, and so basically I think after re-signing our guys and distributing some pay cuts to guys like Alexander, Walter Jones, you know, our big guys who are starting to earn some big paydays, see if we can't get them to give back a little bit. And um, then, as I look at the free agent pool, I'm not too interested. I'd rather keep our players, keep this team intact, and work through the draft. I think that's the best way to do it. In the draft, I think we need to get a tight end. Marcus Pollard, he played awful on Saturday. 
And he's not a bad player, but he's old. And he's not elite anymore. He's not going to give us the deep, th the big threat at tight end that we need. So we should go out and get John Carlson out of Notre Dame. Um, if there's a free agent tight end out there like Ben Troop, uh, you got other guys in the draft like Marcus uh, Martin Rucker, I think his name is. We need a tight end with speed, um, blocking ability, uh, great, you know, good hands. Pollard, uh, the game's passed him by. He's too old and slow now, and his hands are starting to leave. If we get a tight end, that's going to make this offense so much better. And, you know, I don't pretend to know the West Coast offense as well as somebody like Mike Holmgren, but I think Holmgren would agree in saying that if we can get a pass-catching tight end who can catch 60, 70 balls a year, this offense is going to be scary. We thought we had that with Stevens, but that didn't work out, but we need to move on. Second, we need to find a new guard. Chris Gray, he needs to go retire. He needs to go take a seat. He needs to go coach because he can't play very well anymore. He did great for us once upon a time, but once upon a time is not today. He's too old. He can't play very well anymore. I think he was a major part of Alexander and Morris and Weaver combining for a pretty average year in terms of running the ball. I like our tackles. Jones and Locklear, I can go with that. I can go with Spencer. He's going to get better. I can go with Rob Sims. He's going to get better. He's still young, too. But we need to get Gray out, bring in a new guard. Now, if we want to pay the big bucks to Alan Fanica, I'm afraid to do that. He's a little old. His game declined big time this year, and he doesn't seem like the happiest guy in the world. Um, and if you look at the draft, it's not a good draft for interior linemen, but we got to find somewhere, somebody we can dig out who can start and, you know, create those holes in the running game. If we do those two things, I'm pretty confident, I'm very confident, we're going we're gonna to win the NFC West next year. Um, and we could, and we have a very good chance at picking up a first round bye um, and compete for home field advantage. This team is not that far away. Maybe we pick up a new set of fresh legs for our backfield like Jonathan Stewart in the first round. And if he, if Jonathan Stewart's there at our first pick, I'd jump on that. Because Stewart's just a great player, and we would be very lucky if he fell that far. But I think if you give us a new tight end and a new guard, maybe two new guards, maybe that guard's already on the roster in Mansfield Rotto, but we need to get a new guard, however. <clears throat> if we pick up those two things and keep our core of players, I'm looking forward to next year. I think we can be better next year than we were this year. Those are my thoughts, and I know I went pretty long on that, but, I, I, you know, I just got a lot to say, and I'm not done with these videos. I'm going to keep going after the Super Bowl, before the draft, after the draft, so you're going to see more of me. So, great job, Packers and Patriots and Chargers and, Cal and excuse me, Giants, so see ya.